With laughter, there is the risk of appearing the fool. To weep is to risk being called sentimental. To reach out to others is to risk involvement. Nobody wants that, right? <laughs> to expose feelings is to risk showing your true self. To place your ideas in your dreams before the crowd, like I'm doing this morning, is to risk being called naive. To love is to risk not being loved in return. To live is to risk dying. To hope is to risk despair. And to try is to risk failure. How many of you, by a show of hands this morning, have already taken a major risk in some area of your life that I listed here this morning? Yes? Many of us, right? Then why do so many of us feel risk adverse? When in reality, we are natural born risk takers. Have anyone ever seen a baby try to learn how to walk? Like any parents in here remember when their child was learning how to walk, or if you don't have kids, maybe a sibling learning how to walk? My daughter just turned one last month, and a few days after her first birthday, she started to take her first steps, which is really exciting and nerve-wracking, right? Because she stands, she takes a few steps, and then she falls, right? And she gets back up, she takes a few more steps, and then she falls. And my heart absolutely sinks every time she falls near a wall or a sharp corner. I feel like I'm going to die. And it seems like every single moment I am on the verge of saving her life. But she is not afraid. She gets up and she laughs and she smiles with every new step that she's taking. Intrinsically, as a baby, she already knows, right? Like you said, with no risk, there is no Okay, I'm going to have to do that again. I'm heard, I think you guys have heard this one before, right? Where there is no risk, there is no reward. Oh, I love that sound. <laughs> so then why are so many of us afraid to do it? As babies, we seem to get it. But somewhere along the lines, when we start to adult, anyone adulting lately? Um, when we start to adult, we lose the innocence of discovery, and we become afraid to take those major risks and leaps into our dreams and our desires. Oftentimes, even subconsciously, we begin to think, well, I can't live up to my fullest potential. What is that fullest potential? I can't take this major risk in this area of my life. Or we stay stuck in circumstances that don't serve us or the world. Why do we do that? It's usually that infamous F word, not the one that some of you are thinking. It's fear, right? Fear does that. So this morning I'm gonna be talking to you about why not taking risk will leave you broken and uninspired and how to overcome your risk aversion through living a life that is bold and purpose-driven. Is that okay with you? Yes? All together, yes. yes. Ooh, I love it. <laughs> when I was young, I was shy. You guys believe it? Yes, you kind of believe it? I was really shy. So I was the girl that always was behind her mom when, like, when people came around. I'm like, hi. And I remember as I got a little bit older, I wanted to, or I started to have a passion for singing and dancing. Now, if you want to be a singer or a dancer, you cannot be shy. Like, shyness cannot be in your vocabulary. And so I decided I was going to be in the seventh grade talent show. This was going to be my world debut, y'all. Take this seriously. But I was petrified. And I remember being behind the stage with all the other kids waiting for our turns to go on stage. And those kids went onto the stage, and they came off the stage. They went onto the stage, and they came off the stage. And with every kid going and coming, my stomach began to churn. I literally felt like I was going to be sick. My palms began to sweat. I started taking those really shallow breaths, like. And you know when you start doing that, you convince yourself that you're having a full-on panic attack, right? 
and I could feel my heart just inching its way up to my throat, which was scary because I had to go out there and sing in front of the whole school, which may, I mean, it should have just been the whole world because that's how I looked at it at the time. And so more kids went onto the stage and they came back. With every kid, my time to go became closer and closer. Right then and there, the doubt came flooding in, just like so many of us have doubts, right? They just came flooding in. And I'm like, oh my goodness. I started to feel uneasy. You start to kind of pace. I told myself, my talent was not up to par with those other kids. I was gonna go out there and I'm going to bomb. And in an instant, I knew that I couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it. But before I could beeline my way out of this auditorium, my name was called. I was like, dang. <laughs> Tiffany Lanier and Samantha Lesson singing Blessed by Christina Aguilera. <laughs> what? I was a teeny bopper, OK? I loved me some Christina Aguilera. And I remember turning to my friend that I'm singing this duet with, and I whispered, I can't do this. And she looked at me, mind you, she had been singing since like second grade. And she said, of course you can. This is what you wanted. Don't you hate when your friends are right? And I'm like, oh God, yes, Tiffany, this is what you wanted. So it was like the walk of shame almost. <laughs> so my head was down and I'm just shuffling my way onto the stage. And never once did I look up at the crowd. I closed my eyes and I took a deep breath. The music started to play and when I opened my eyes to look out towards the crowd, I realized that this is, what, this is everything that I had ever wanted. I was home. The stage was my home. And if I would have left that auditorium, I would have never discovered it. So I walked up towards the mic a little bit closer because I had to sing the first verse, which is pretty nerve wracking, right? I get up to the mic <clears throat> and I start really nervously singing. When I think how life used to be, always walking in the shadows then i looked at what you've given me i feel like dancing on my tiptoes i must say every day i wake and realize you're by my side i know i'm truly blessed What? Oh my gosh, you guys. I did it. I did it. I felt the fear and I did it anyway. Because fear is a liar. Fear told me that there was going to be judgment, ridicule, and failure on the other side of those curtains, right? Because that's what fear does to us. Fear is the onset of a broken mindset. Fear makes us feel really uneasy and less than. Fear is what brings on us to doubt ourselves and our abilities. That doubt then lead us to believing that our glass is half empty. And we start to fall into these woe is me patterns, finding contentedness in our mediocrity and having a tendency to play it safe. <clears throat> Author Saren Van Brethnach, I think she was German. <laughs> she said, playing safe is the riskiest choice we could ever make. 
yet so many of us do, right? We want to feel that sense of security. We want to be protected at all times. Now, is that a crime to want to feel safe? No, it's not. But we should want to feel safe and protect ourselves from harm's way, right? We should guard our lives from ill circumstances. But too many of us take safety to a whole nother level, right? We, that need to feel safe drives us, or drives, the need to feel safe allows fear to drive us. And it drives us in every single thing that we do. Now, instead of just protecting us from life and death situations, we use it for everything. So that need to be safe becomes the trap. Have you guys ever felt trapped in your life from time to time? You feel a little trapped. So it creates the trap. We do what? We make safe moves. Like, I'm just going to take this one little step. It's just right here. There, that's crossing the line, right? We make very safe decisions. And we never explore the complexities of our creativity or allow ourselves to shine in a world full of darkness. It was Marianne Williamson who said, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. Has anyone ever heard that quote before? So when we decide to not play full out, we give ourselves permission to do what? Play it safe. Everyone repeat after me. We play it safe. So then we start to lie to ourselves to protect ourselves from our own dreams. We say, come here, little dream. Come over here. Come into this little box. Here in this little box, no one will judge you. No one will harm you. You're safe right here with me. And we protect our dreams like we protect our children, always wanting to keep them safe. But like children, there's a time that we have to do what? We have to let them go, right? We have to let them go. And when we let them go, they are free. And they're free to explore the possibilities of all that they've ever hoped for. And only then do we let our dreams soar. But instead, we decide to play it safe. Yeah, we're still playing it safe over here. We create a safety net, right? A safety net that protects us and our dreams from all those fears on the outside of that safety net. But we forgot that we carried those fears with us. So those fears are actually on this side of the safety net the whole time. Year after year, decade after decade, and we find ourselves down the line sitting in a rocking chair, just moving, looking out towards the sky. We inhale. and we realize that we're empty. Broken, really. Broken because that safety net kept us from exploring the unknown, right? Just that little net. Kept us from going to the school, from going to get the better job, from going to start that business. For those of you that are business owners, stopping us from really building something that we want to leave that legacy. 
or we simply never auditioned for the talent show. Now at this time, you may feel a little broken, may even be a little financially broke from those decisions that you've made, right? But it's in your mind that plagues you because your mind starts to spin and you start to think, is this all that I came here for? Is this it? Is this life? You know, have you ever said, is this real life? <laughs> is no one ever going to recognize the talent within me? But maybe you never took the time to recognize the talent within yourself, right? And usually we don't recognize the talent within ourselves because there is this top big three that comes after us and it like takes over our world and it paralyzes us in our safe little thoughts. You guys wanna know what the big three are? Yes, yes, yes? So the big three, number one is the fear of failure. How many of you have been afraid of the fear of failure, that infamous fear of failure, Ugh, right? Many people do, whether y'all want to admit it or not. <laughs> Nobody wants to feel like a failure. Nobody wants to feel inadequate, right? We just don't. Like, it just, it's not a good feeling. And it's hard to imagine yourself going home to your spouse or your loved one and admitting that you failed. It's even harder to look into your child's eyes and realize that you sacrificed giving them something to invest in your dreams. These same dreams that now seem like they're just slipping through your fingers, which can be a very crippling reality. So we never take a bigger risk to do better. Number two is the fear of success. That's a real fear. I don't think people like actually believe it, but it's a real fear. And for those of us that may have the fear of success, this is what we fear. We fear that success may change us, right? We grew up a certain way, like this kind of success may change you. People may start to look at you differently, or you might not fit in with the people that you were always with. Or you could gain so much success so quickly, it happens sometimes, right? That you can't sustain it. And then ultimately, you will fail. And fear, well, this is not a fear, well, maybe. <laughs> and number three is you're too risk adverse. So you look at risk as the possibilities of losing what you have versus the opportunity to gain something more. Not taking risk is a risk I'm not willing to take if being broke or broken is a state I don't wish to be in. So I call not taking risk settling. Because good enough is never great. A leap of faith. Has anyone ever seen Rent? I'm a huge musical person. In order to overcome these broke mentalities, you have to take a big leap of faith. You have to decide to live a life that is bold, right? It's important for us to start doing what we came here to do. Now, I'm a firm believer in gratitude, so I want you to be thankful for everything that you have, but know that you're capable of so much more. But many of us aren't willing to commit to the change, right? There was a quote by Kevin Trudeau that totally changed my mindset a few years ago. And he said, if you want the things in your life to change, you have to change the things in your life. Quite simple, but to me, I was like, whoa. Why am I like stuck in this, in this thing? Why don't I take these actions to make this change? I believe there's only a few factors that keep us from going after our dreams and our desires. 
And one is our mindset. It's probably a good 80% is our mindset, right? And the other, especially nowadays, is that underutilization of the tools and resources that we all have available at our fingertips. We have like something that's totally awesome. It's called the internet. The internet's cool. These smartphones that I see every single person in this place have, right? Those are powerful things that we have with us today. And with that smartphone and the internet, we have the possibility to reach people all over the world, which is pretty darn neat, which then allows us to reach mentors, partners, have collaborations, new customers, clients maybe, and just really meet extraordinary people doing extraordinary things. These people, all of us in here and all the people around the world, creates so much opportunity and possibility for each and every one of us. Because also with the internet and these awesome little handy dandy smartphones, it's more than just taking a selfie. Like there's a lot of power in these phones, all right? We can now start to share our gifts and our expertise faster. We now have platforms that will give us or give our voices a platform to speak to the masses. These gifts and expertise that we have, people are willing to pay for them. Believe it or not, people are willing to pay for this stuff. And so you may be thinking, some of you, who maybe have not taken that leap of faith to go do something that you really want to do, well, what's my value? Like, what do I really have to offer the world? Anyone guess? <laughs> Each and every single one of you in here is valuable. Your stories, your skills, your experience, your expertise, the passion and interest that you have in the most randomest of things, people are willing to learn about and they will totally pay for it if you wanted to start a business. But even if you didn't want to start a business, you can create community of interest and just do something that lights you up. You see, this broke mentality is more than just our mindset issues and in our finances. It's become a disorder. We've allowed it to convince us that we're not able or that we're not fully capable of going after anything that we want. But the time is now. We have all of the resources right now to do big and major things. Because ladies and gentlemen, there is no time for us to soak and be broke in any way or shape or form, right? Let's stop that, let's stop being broke. <laughs> I want you to take this with you. I want you to live like you're going to die tomorrow, but learn like you're going to live forever. This may sound a little cliche, but no one ever promised any of you that it was gonna be easy, right? But so many of us promise that it's going to be worth it. What is that dream to you? That one idea could change your life. One idea. Sometimes it takes you a couple ideas to find the one that changes your life. But that big, bold move that you decide to make can change the world. Janet Rand continued her poem to say, risk must be taken. Because a life without risk is nothing. The person who doesn't take risk, does nothing, has nothing, is nothing, and becomes nothing. He may avoid sorrow and suffering, but he simply can't learn, feel, change, or love. Chained in his certitude, he is a slave. He has forfeited his freedom. Only the person who takes risk is truly free. So the time is now for you to take that big, bold leap into doing what you want. And I want to end today 
with, this, uh, with the words of my father, he tells me this all of the time. He's kind of motivational himself. He says, every day the sun rises is a another chance for change, another chance to awake, be awesome, and bring on the big in your life. Thank you. Oh, you guys are too much. Nice. So, everyone, if you guys have any questions for Tiffany? No, yeah, I keep walking into this thing. Can you drink for us again? <laughs> Shh, no, no, I can't. No, I can't. She's scared. I'm scared. <laughs> it's a risk that I don't know if I want to take again. Yes. Oh, okay. Well, we'll start there, and then we'll go back to that. Well, I mean, but there's been an evolution. I think for many entrepreneurs, we all know when we start, it's not always the same place that you end up a year, two years, three years, four years down the line. Um, when I first started, I was doing social media management for entrepreneurs and startup companies. And so I actually stumbled upon entrepreneurship. So it was one of these stories that I was working for a... Uh, a marketing agency, and some things were going on. I don't want to say anything too bad, but some things were happening that I just realized that I couldn't be at this workspace anymore. And so I went to the owner and told him I could no longer work for you, but I could work with you. So if you want to keep me on as a uh, consultant or um, freelance marketer, then that's how we will maintain this relationship. Now that's a pretty bold move, would you say? I thought he was going to say no, <laughs> but he actually said, sure, which was really weird. Um, and he became my first client. And the startup company that I worked for uh, before I took the leap of faith to uh, go to even this particular job called me and wanted me to continue to work with them as well. So I started to gain um, clients kind of like word of mouth, and then that's how I, I got started. However, you would think that's a nice story. It's like, oh, she just stumbled upon clients, and it was just so easy. Well, let's say six months later, I was broke, okay? So I didn't, I didn't maintain those relationships. I didn't go out. And this is something that I'm going to give advice to people starting up. Um, I didn't maintain relationships, network, and do all the things that you should really be doing so that people know what you do. Because if they don't know what you do, they can't buy from you. Um, and I didn't understand that when I first started. And so I kind of fell all the way to the ground and just worked myself back up. But to answer your question um, about the risk that I took. I think the biggest risk at that time when I had absolutely nothing, like $20 in my bank account, nothing. I made that decision, well, it was one of those, I should probably go get a job. Like I should really probably just go get a job because this is hard. <laughs> you know, this, this maintaining of relationships and getting people to like understand what I do is kind of difficult. Um, but I took a huge risk and I went to an event, I like, so I, I'm not a financial planner, um, but I maxed out my credit card and went to an event because I wanted to learn more about personal branding and how to start utilizing the internet to spread my message. Um, even though I was doing social media, it's, it's a whole different world depending on where you are in it um, and how to start building digital products and all these different things. And so I took the risk to just do that because I felt that I needed to know something. I needed an edge in the marketplace. Um, and so that was my biggest risk that I took, but it changed my whole life. Because coming back, I gained a couple of clients and then I started kind of coming back up again. But it was that information that has kind of built my whole business. So what do I do today? I coach on clarity, and I'm, I guess I specialize in personal development and personal branding. So I work with authors, speakers, coaches, experts, entertainers, people who are trying to build their platforms online, and figure out what is that thing that is you. How to discover that vision within yourself, and then how to give it a platform so that you can go and spread that message, like I was saying with the internet and the phones, around the world. So that one risk in that moment that I could have decided to take a job or go to this event completely changed my life, right? And who I am today and how I'm able to even 
how I started my whole career. So to me, taking risk is one of those things that I've always just done because I know that everything that I want is on the other side of those risks and of that fear. Does that answer your question? I gave you guys a really long story for that one, but just so you can get to know me a little bit better. Um, any other questions? So with every big risk, there's got to be some type of nerve. Do you consider yourself a risk manager? <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> That's a very conservative way of thinking. If you're an entrepreneur, I don't know if there's any risk management. You just kind of have to go with it. Um, let me try to think on my logical side of my brain, and I'll be with you in a moment. Um, <laughs> let's see. I mean, you can always play the devil's advocate in, in your decision making, right? Like, what am I really going to gain by taking this risk? Or should I pay it a little bit more safe and just wait a little while, get some people to play with me on this side of this risk factor? But usually playing, that's, that's what I call playing safe and playing small. So the only management is just to go full throttle and get people to back you and just move forward. That's probably not what a risk manager would say, but that's my advice. <laughs> I help you live bold, okay? So I don't, I don't do that whole conservative management thing. Any other questions? Now. Okay, we are wrapping up. <laughs>